Okay, welcome back everybody. I am very excited. We are a week away from the maiden voyage of this 1976 Argus Airstream. I've put almost three years of hard work, plus my dad as well as put a lot of hard work himself into this. Um, and we're almost there. Almost there. This is a busy week though. We've got a lot to do to get there. Now we won't have it completely done. There'll be a few little things we'll finish up. I'm going to go over all that in this video. First, we got to jump in and get this door fixed. I've been aware of this issue since I started fixing this camper that the bottom of the door closes, the top doesn't quite seal. Very likely could have happened when I took the shell off, put it back on. Um, but I procrastinated the issue and we're finally gonna tackle it. And it gets a little sketchy. And we're probably doing things we shouldn't be doing, but through a lot of troubleshooting with my dad, we were able to figure out a way to solve the issue and get it to close properly and seal. So let's just jump right into that and get started on that part of the build. So basically what we ended up doing, my idea here was to pull the camper up next to a tree and get a ratchet strap and actually try to pull the top corner of that door frame out. Because my, my original thought was that that had somehow bent in. I didn't think it was the door. Yeah, no, uh, I, I, the, I was just trying to recorrect that top section, pull it back out. And I thought maybe if I took the rivets off on the inside of the camper and um, got a ratchet strap, we could kind of force that back tweak it back into place probably not a great idea but at this point i didn't really know what to do we had to get this fixed so that didn't really work as you can tell in the video So we just kept rolling forward. We just changed our angle of attack. Um, I thought maybe we're pulling in the wrong direction. So we repositioned things, got the strap going more vertical, thinking that we needed to pull the jam more upward. Again, that did not work. But it's gotta be fixed, so I just don't know what to do to fix it. Okay, so through much trial and error and a lot of thinking and scratching our heads, I think we finally come to a solution to this. Now, originally I thought that this top section here had kind of caved in a little bit um, and bent when we had the shell apart. I think that still might slightly be the case, but more than that, I think that when we put the shell on the camper, it got too low down here. And I didn't take any consideration when we put the shell back on the frame, how this door fit. I just, we just riveted it on, you know, so we didn't, didn't really think to take any care there. And that's where the problem is. So if you close this door, there's a sizable gap here, a pretty big one. There's not much of a gap here. And then when you look at the top, the, the door actually hits the frame it won't even seal up it won't close and so that whole frame is kind of cocked down like that and so what we're doing is we've torn off this belly pin torn off is the wrong word we've taken the rivets out let it loose um, basically this this section of the shell uh, which rivets to a c channel down here on the the, the subfloor and attached to the frame taking that off of there frees up this bit of the shell frees up this frame and if you get a crowbar under here you can kind of see it's hard to do here but you can move it you can move that whole this whole door frame and this section of the shell up 
And when we do that, if someone goes in the camper, pulls it back, and we look, it, it fits a lot better. So my dad has a much larger crowbar because we need more leverage. We need to get a little bit higher. So we're going to try to get more leverage on it. Shim underneath here, underneath the jam, and then get some new rivets all in along here and try to kind of reposition everything. The, da the biggest downside to this is the door lock that I took so much time installing probably now is not going to line up to the hole in the door because we're going to move the jam. It will move the door a little bit, but mostly we're just moving the door frame and leaving the door where it is. It's not good. It's pushing it out a little. I think I'm in there for a minute. Down, doesn't it? Oh, oh, okay. We gotta bring it back up. I don't know. All right, let me take these out because they're not gonna hold it. Now, you could see there that we were having issues as we let off the leverage. Things were kind of what was happening was the actual jam was, and the side of the chair actually wanted to kind of the, the force coming down was wanting to push everything out. Um, and so we had it shimmed underneath the jam, right. which was keeping it from going too much down, but then it was just kind of sliding out. Oh, God. And so I realized there's Hold two that. screw holes at the really bottom good. of the door frame that go in down into the trailer, into the floor. Uh, and I didn't have any screws in there. I hadn't put those in yet. So if, with something in there, it would keep that door frame from sliding out under the weight. So I put a, a pretty sizable uh, screw into that. It went down into a frame material. And that screw was able to keep, as we let leverage off, was able to keep the frame from kind of wanting to buckle outwards and kind of held everything in place. So that's kind of where we landed. I hope, you know, I hope that's a fix. I think it is. Once we riveted everything back together, interior wall, the outside, put things back in the C-channel, I think it's all pretty dang strong and sturdy and ready to go. And, you know, thankfully after a day's worth of work, we've got that situation behind us. Okay, so before we take the camper on the road, I wanted to get it clean. Somehow when it sits in the carport, it gets really dirty. I don't know if something from the roof is falling down. So I got this really nice power washer from Giraffe Tools. Basically you hang on the wall, hung it in my garage right next to where we parked the Argosy. It has an auto retract reel on it, which is super nice. It just hangs on a clip on the wall. You pull that reel out, you hook your hose up to it, and you've got a legitimate pressure washer ready to go. It did an amazing job of being able to get up and clean the top of the camper. I got a big brush so I can brush things and it was super helpful in getting uh, the camper all cleaned up. But also I found it pretty helpful and getting my truck which gets dirty and muddy because i work in it i was able to use it to power wash all the mud off the wheels of my truck all up in the wheel well get everything nice and clean and it works great it's got four different tips you can put on the end different angles of spray and then once i had all the mud off the truck it was on my driveway so it did a great job especially washing that mud right off the driveway the best thing about this little dude is that you can retract the hose super easily so it has that real and it has a little track to keep the hose on the reel properly and it locks so when you pull it out it stays wherever you want it you got 100 feet of hose so you got plenty of link and when you're done you just release the lock and let it reel in and it stores away real nicely it's a great little addition to my garage to help clean basically the argosy uh, once we take it out and bring it back we can hose it down and get it all nice and pretty again pretty cool product i'm going to link it in the description you guys need to check that out um if you need to clean an RV, your truck, anything like that, 
This is a good addition to your home. Okay, I got the AC running, so my apologies if it's a bit noisy in here, but it's like 100 degrees in Texas right now, so I'm cranking that thing on. I'm gonna work on cork today. So this is gonna be the wall paneling here. I've already pre-cut the first row. So that'll just go up there just like that. Should look pretty cool. Now, I've, ha I've been kind of scheming how I wanna glue this up. I'm gonna give this a shot. I have a ton of hide glue. This is protein glue. So this is animal hide. I have a box full of this stuff that I've had for years. I first started, when I first started furniture making, I did an apprenticeship in Berea, Kentucky doing chair making. We made ladder back chairs and we had a glue pot just like this all day heating up glue. Uh, we glue all of our chairs together with high glue. Now the great thing about high glue is that it is reversible. All you need is heat and moisture and the glue reverses. All of old school antique furniture back in the days, this was the glue they used. It is a really, really good glue, super versatile. And I've just about got this stuff ready. So uh, basically what we do is we put the granules in this, in this um, container with water and they'll absorb the water and then you add heat. So this is called the glue pot. It's plugged into the wall. It's producing heat. There's water down in there and it's heating this up and it's just about ready to roll. The only downside to this is it's not immediate. So gravity might want to pull, probably will want to pull these tiles down and my, my solution is somewhere around here if I can find it. I don't know what I did with it. There it is. It's a little pin dealer. So um, if I have to, I'll just pop a very small pin. These don't have a head to them, so they'll disappear into the cork. You'll never see them, and they'll hold it in place. And I should be able to just roll out the cork and get it glued up. I don't know if this is going to work. We're going to give it a quick test run, do one row, let it sit, see how well it sticks. And if it works, go from there. Okay, so let's take a walk back in here. I'm gonna show you what we've got with the door. Pretty much build it just like we built all the walls in the Argosy. So this is the interior frame that Robert has been working on. Um, basically a poplar frame with just some foam to, to, to fill the gaps, insulate a little bit. This stuff is styrofoam, so it's just, I just, I'm to the point now where I'm just using materials I have laying around the shop because I wanna save on money. We've got the quarter inch ply that'll go on both sides. We're about to put that in the bag right now. And then once we set that in the vacuum bag, get it glued on, we've got some leftover red elm veneers here that we're gonna lay up with the grain going this way. So I'm gonna work on getting these set and ready. The minute that comes out of the bag, we'll be able to throw these on it and then put it back in the bag. So it's quite the process, quite a few steps. You've watched me do this before on the walls. 
Um, so I'm not going to go in depth with it. But for now, for right now, I'm going to go ahead and get these taped up. Okay, so for the frame of the door, we just used some oak banding. Uh, I made a little kind of dado cut in it so it slides over the edge of the door and we glued it on. It kind of captures that veneer in there and it's mitered at the corners and it just gives it a nice finished look uh, and obviously hides that plywood edge. Okay, so Robert worked today some on getting this door hung. You got all the hinge pockets knocked out and those mortises in and it looks great it did a great job everything lines up which is not an easy thing to do um and he knocked it out but the door's a little big that's definitely not his fault doesn't quite close so we got a probably will be a decent gap there a little bit of a funky deal here if i bang that in there All right, so door is installed, fits well. A little bit of hand plane work and we got it closing up really nice. There's a slight bevel on this, so kind of helps you get a tighter tolerance. Everything looks great. So we've got the stop on the back here that just gets screwed on and kind of acts as a, not only a door stop, but it's the trim. Still got more screws to put in that. And then on the stop, we put a little bit of window gasket material. You see this black rubber, so that way when you close it, it has a nice, nice sound to it. And that is a good fit, friends. I, I mean, couldn't do much better. So there you have it, a door. Now we take it off, sand it up real good, and put a finish on it, and rehang it, and we got to put a door handle lock on it as well. So it's not done yet, but the brunt of the work, the hard stuff is behind us okay today I'm going to finally start on the kind of front dinette section we're gonna start with the top shelf that goes along the bench I have procrastinated this part of the build for way too long I thought about it way too much and here we are two and a half weeks away from having to use this thing so today we're gonna to get going so a quick overview of what's gonna go on we're going to wrap a shelf all the way around it's gonna be roughly 5 8 half inch thick and it's going to continue all the way out to about here. And it's gonna become a support for the extension to the table. There's a lot going on here, but the first thing we gotta do is get the shelf on. So I've been tossing around whether I just wanted to make it quick and easy. I already have a jig um, that fits that curve pretty well left over from when I made the bench. 
So we're good on getting that profile. Uh, it's just deciding whether we want to, you know, take a big sheet of plywood and just cut it out and throw plywood on there and edge band it. What I really want to do, and against my better judgment, which I think I'm going to do, is I think I'm going to do a bent lamb and curve it that way. And it'll just look really cool because you'll have these laminations falling around. And then we'll spline on this extra piece. Hey, door. Right here. And, you know, that's going to be it. Really not a difficult process. It's just time consuming. we got to make 68 individual pieces at a 16th of an inch thick that will flex and bend around a form. We have to make that form as well. So luckily I have the CNC. I should be able to move through this pretty quick. We got to find material though. And I think I've got just the piece. Ideally, we would use something long enough to span the whole curve. So you can kind of match it all up, make it look nice. We need about 138 inches to do that. Two 68 inch long pieces. I don't have anything in the shop that long enough, but like a year and a half ago, this piece just magically showed up at my house. I don't even know where it came from. I don't know whose it is. Big old chunk of Douglas fir, a big beam. My kids have been using it as like a bridge and a thing to play on for their climbing tree. Sorry kids, but I think we're gonna claim this because it's got the length we need. We can mill all of our parts out of this, all of our bit laminations and probably have enough left to get the extensions off the end. And it is a little weathered and cracked up. Um, we'll try to stay out of this, you know, all the cracks are gonna be in the flat song grain. So let's try to stay out here in the rift and vertical grain where it's nice and clean and no cracks. And we'll start processing this. First thing we gotta do is carry it to the shop.
Okay, so it's a new day. Yesterday we got all these knocked out. I don't remember how many, I, don't, I haven't counted how many I got in here, but if you've been following along and you have no idea what I'm talking about when I say bent lambs, this is it right here. Just basically taking a normal board, this is two boards, cutting it into a bunch of thin strips so they're flexible, and then we'll bend these around a form and put adhesive on them, and once the adhesive sets, it holds the curve the, of the form. Yep. Let me grab a clamp. Something like that. All right, there it is in the clamps. Came together nicely, everything looks good. I, you just gotta cross our fingers and hope that we don't glue it to the form. I think the shellac and the wax will help prevent that. That's the whole purpose behind that. Um, this will have to set overnight. We'll pop it out tomorrow, we'll put the other one in and then we can work on, first thing we'll work on is milling it down. So we'll get it to the thickness we want. It's gonna go to about 5 8 maybe 11 16 So we got quite a bit of material to work with. And then from there, we'll cut our little scribe on the back and work on fitting it. And then hopefully once the other, this one will be ready once the other one comes out of the clamps and we can hopefully maybe have this close to done tomorrow, if not the following day. Happy with it though. It's so cool doing these bit lambs. It's a lot of fun. And it's just pretty interesting that we took an old grayed out beam hanging from my kid's climbing tree and turned it into this. Pretty cool. Okay, so that's about as far as I'm going to take it for this video. The bent lambs, we're going to fo follow that up, installing those in another video and doing that front kind of table area. It's going to be a little bit weird probably on the continuity of it all because you know, obviously in a week from today we're taking this on a trip and I want to film that and share that with you guys. So I don't know how I'm going to roll that together. Maybe I'll get that video out before we go. We'll see. Obviously, i got to build that table before we leave. So... Uh, if I can get it all edited, I'll try to post it before. Funny story real quick, we bought a new, we got a new Toyota Highlander over there. Actually, right after we purchased the Argosy, uh, I decided to get a Ford Expedition to be our tow vehicle because it tows as much as the, the Tundra here and it gets really good gas mileage and it fits for an SUV and it fits my kids. Great. So two years have passed and the Ford Expedition is gone. We never even got to tow the Argosy with it. Turns out Ford makes horrible vehicles. We replaced the transmission on that. It was a 2018. We replaced the transmission, cost a ton of money. And then about a month ago, uh, traveling home from Colorado, we were in West Texas in the middle of nowhere, and the engine just went out. One of the cylinders quit working. We were stranded for a day and a half, had to get a hotel. Uh, I had to get my father in law to get the Tundra and hook up my trailer. And I had to haul the expedition back and had to get a new car. So, horrible experience with the Fords. If you need a good car, buy a Toyota. Best vehicles on the planet. So let's step in here. I want to give you guys a very, very quick tour. I know this is a long video, so I don't want to hang on to you guys too long here, but we're very close to done and a lot has changed. So I want to kind of walk you through it really quick. Okay, so the sink area, all that. Um, I just actually refinished the countertop, sanded it down because it got a little beat up in the 
construction process. We got uh, screens in. I screened this door here. Did it myself. Turned out not very good. It's super loose. And I decided from there, I'm going to pay someone to do it. So all the screens were done by a professional and they used really durable screen material. So those are all in. We've got window latches all back installed. It's so the windows are all good to go. Screens are on. We got this fuzzy stuff in the screens to keep bugs out. We've hung the curtain track. Curtains will be here next week. And I'll get curtains on here. So this is aluminum track uh, that came with the trailer original. It did mount under a cabinet. So this is this was an insane amount of work. Um, but I don't have the, a top cabinet, right? When we originally restored this, there was a giant plastic cabinet here. Took that out, and I had to fabricate these little wooden shims that are at certain angles on each bracket uh, to keep this thing in the right position. That was frustrating, and it took a lot of time, but it had to be done. You got to have curtains in here, otherwise you're not going to be able to, I mean, have any privacy. We've got some shades here. Uh, my wife picked these out. Uh, they're growing on me. They're growing on me. I think they fit the camper well. I added some little leather straps down here, and they just tie on to your handle this is this is not i don't know if this is going to be permanent or not but so that just keeps them from hanging down because obviously the walls are sloped and then we can just slide them right up and there you go the bathroom door is all done the bathroom is pretty much finished so we've got a handle on this we've got a lock we've got finish on it um, it looks great it all fits nicely i've got a switch plate to get in here Shower got painted. My dad went through and, and painted the bottom with Total Boat topside paint, polyurethane paint. So um, it looks brand new and clean and pretty. Everything's been sealed off. So we got some paneling here on the side. I've got a backsplash piece that matches this wood that is getting finished in the shop. It'll drop in there. Yeah, this is all done. We just painted the PVC pipe black for now. I'll figure something else out. I still got to build this cabinet. That'll happen down the road. I've got shower curtain here, custom made walnut shower curtain gotta hang that my daughter's bed obviously is set up and in she's so excited about our first trips for her birthday she's already got her bed set up she's picked out her sheets her pillow and all that cool stuff that's where we're at i mean we're gonna go camping with the way this looks i've got basically the week to finish out the shelf i'll just give you a little sneak peek because i got half of one up here you can kind of see how cool that looks that curved grain got some work to do on that but we're gonna get it all nice and pretty here real soon and then we've got the table to build and the extensions so my boys can sleep up here okay it's been a long one so i appreciate you guys if you stuck with me thanks for tuning in uh like i said a week from today we're going to the beach in this bad boy and i cannot wait to to enjoy some time away in it and to finally use it i'm going to be doing some really cool follow-up videos obviously we've still got more build out to do in here and we're not going to stop making the videos i've got upper cabinets to make finish out the shelves all this i'm going to post all that and I'm going to do a couple follow-up videos, probably overviewing the cost of this renovation, um, what it appraised for. I got it appraised, so I know what the value of it is, uh, how I'm getting it insured. Um, I'm going to go over the mistakes that I've made, things I would do differently, all the things I've learned. I want to post a video about that, so uh, be on the lookout probably several, maybe a month down the road uh, for that video. Um, I think that if, if you're restoring an Airstream or an RVC, that will be super helpful for you to kind of know everything I did wrong because I did, I did some things wrong here and I wish I could go back and change them but you can't so that's just what it is uh in the end in the grand scheme of thing I'm just freaking happy I got it done I pushed through it was a hard remodel uh many a times I thought eh, I don't know if I can get through this but um I'm about 90% of the way there so I'm pumped and generally the way I work I get about 90% of the way there and then I kind of pump the brakes I'm gonna try really hard on this to just get back from the beach trip and finish it out. So I don't want to leave anything undone on this. And plus, I got a good big announcement about the trailer. Um, eventually, I'm going to share that with you guys too, but I want to have it all done before I do that. As I said earlier, thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Leave me a comment. Uh, be on the lookout. Next video, we're going to be at the beach, hanging out, having a good time. So uh, we'll see you guys soon. So thank so until then, take care, guys.